Chapter 3, Problem Solving and Reasoning Chapter 3.1, Topic, Deductive and Inductive Reasoning According to Richard Feynman, Mathematics is a language plus reasoning. It is like a language plus logic. Mathematics is a tool for reasoning. So let's start with inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is the process of reaching a general conclusion by examining specific examples. A conclusion based on inductive reasoning is called a conjecture. A conjecture may or may not be correct. Example. Use inductive reasoning to predict the next number in each of the following lists. So all we have to do is look at the pattern that we can find with this series of numbers. We have letter A, 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. What do you think is the next number? If we observe 3 and then 6, they have a difference of 3. And then to get 9, another 3 is added. And then to get 12, it's also 3 and 15. So, based on this, we could say that the next number is 18. Letter B, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. Um, they don't have common difference. I think we could find a pattern in their difference. So, let's check. 1, 3 has a difference of 2. 3, 6 is 3. 6 and 10 is 4. 10 and 15 is 5. So looking at their differences, they are consecutive number. With the next number, we simply need to add 6 to get 21. Example 2. Consider the statement, when two odd integers are added, the sum is always even. So here, we're going to use inductive reasoning to suggest that the statement is true. 1 and 5 which are all odd integers so if we add them the result is 6 which is even okay. let's try another one negative integers um, negative 3 odd plus another negative let's say negative 7 so that would give us negative 10 which is again even how about if um, unlike sign, um, negative 5 and positive 11, that would give us positive 6. And then again, that's even. Then we could make a conjecture that when two odd integers are added, the sum is always even, is a true statement. A statement is a true statement provided it is true in all cases. If you can find one case in which a statement is not true, we call that one a counterexample, then the statement is a false statement. So let's have this following example. Find a counterexample. Verify that each of the following statements is a false statement by finding a counterexample. So for all number x, first example, absolute value of x is greater than zero so maybe i could say let x be equal to zero because when my x is zero absolute value of x is greater than zero zero is greater than zero is a false statement there you have my counter example so that would make this statement a false one Second example, x squared is greater than x. So, I could say, let x be equal to, I could have 0, but you can try 1. Because 1 squared is greater than 1. And 1 is greater than 1 is a false statement. So, the whole statement is false. You can actually find two or more, but for a counterexample, uh, we only need one. Third, square root of x squared is equal to x. So, let 
x be equal to maybe we could have negative 1 because we can have negative 1 squared is equal to negative 1 so square root of 1 is equal to negative 1 that is 1 equals negative 1 which is then again a false statement Next, deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is the process of reaching a conclusion by applying general assumptions, procedures, or principles. It relies on a general statement or hypothesis. Sometimes we call these hypotheses premises, a premise, assumed to be true. A premise is used to reach a specific logical conclusion. Example, all men are rational beings. John is a man. Therefore, John is a rational being. The first two statements constitute the premises. So these are our premises. And the last statement constitute the conclusion. And this is our conclusion. Another example is you have A is B, C is A, therefore B is C. Then we have the third. All muscles are made out of living tissue. All humans have muscles. Therefore, all humans are made out of living tissue. Validity of arguments. An argument form is valid if no matter which particular propositions are substituted for the propositional variables in its premises, the conclusion is true if the premises are all true. Okay, let's check if this argument is valid. Of course, our premises are assumed to be true. Okay, so if you thought today, let's say this is our P and class suspended is Q. So we have a conditional statement that P then Q. If floods today, this is actually the same as our P. Since this is still our premise, it is assumed to be true. Our P is true. So we could say this one is true. The class is suspended, so this is our Q. The conclusion is Q. So the question, is it true or false? We know that our P is true. This one, we know that our P is true. Is our Q true? If you go back with our the truth table for conditional statements, if your P is true, to make the whole statement true, your Q must be true also. So this one must be true to make the whole statement true. Because if this is false, then true-false is false. But since we know that it is true, so the only option is that our Q is true. Therefore, this one is also true. Since our conclusion is true, given that all our premises are true, then the argument is now valid. Some basic rules of inferences to make a valid argument. Problem solving strategy, Polya's four step process. These Polya's steps are used to solve math problems and was created by the mathematician George Polya. So the advantage of this Polya's problem solving model is that it enables the students to be more careful in understanding the steps and process of solving the problem. And it also provides a neatly arranged framework to solve a long and complex problem which could help students to organize their effort in solving problem. Step 1. Understand the problem. Sometimes the problem lies in understanding the problem. So you have to read the problem carefully. Second, devise a plan. So you have to come up with ways to solve the problem. So you have to set up equation, drawing a diagram, and making a chart. And then the step three is carry out the plan. This next step is where you solve the equation you come up with with step two. And then step four, look back. So in this step, you need to check to see if all the information are correctly used and that all answers make sense. Example one, twice... The difference of a number and 1 is 4 more than that number. Find the number. So, step 1, you have to understand the problem. So, make sure that you read the question.
carefully several times since we are looking for a number, we let the x be the number. Next, devise a plan. Twice the difference of a number and 1 is 4 more than that number. So we're going to translate this. So the difference of a number okay, and 1. So x minus 1. Then we have twice their difference. So times 2 is equals 4 more than that number so x so we have now our equation third carry out the plan so you have to solve so we go back with the equation we come up with okay distribute 2 to x minus 1 okay so we have 2x minus 2 equals 4 plus x gather our variables on one side so 2x minus x equals 4 plus 2 simplify so x is equal to 6 now for step 4 look back so check and interpret so all we have to do is substitute x is equal to 6 to our equation so substitute simplify and then we get 10 is equal to 10 so our final answer so the number is 6 the sum of two numbers is 177 if the second number is 3 less than the first number then what are the numbers understand the problem so let x be our first number then our second number would be x minus 3 next we have to devise a plan so we simply add the 2. The sum of the two numbers is 177. Step 3, carry out the plan. So let's try to solve. So 2x is equal to 180. Divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to 90. So that's our first number. Carry out the plan for the second number. So, x minus 3 is equal to our second number. So, simply substitute 90 minus 3, so 87. So, we have now our second number. Step 4, look back. Substitute x to 90 and... Oh, yeah. Substitute... Okay, substitute x equals 90 to x uh, to our... Uh, original equation okay so we get 127 equals 177 so the final answer the numbers are 90 and 87